I remember when you were drafted. This is one of the greatest markets in the NHL. It should have worked. Yeah. Where did it go sideways? You know, we obviously changed management in, um, in 2020, and it just seemed like we were heading towards another, uh, I don't want to say rebuild, but, you know, we weren't, uh, we weren't really in a position of, you know, that we were going to try and, you know, go win. And, you know, I was hearing a lot of things that we were going to try and, uh, you know, try and do a rebuild or so, you know, I, I, I went to the team and just said, I didn't, uh, I, I wasn't really happy with, uh, with the idea of that. And that if that's the route they wanted to take that, uh, that maybe it would be better to move me and, uh, use me as sort of a, as a jump start and, and, and get some, uh, you know, picks, prospects, whatever you want to say, and, and, um, and, and start your rebuild if that's, if that's the case. And obviously that didn't go over well. Um, you know, I'm a competitor. I want to win. We obviously hadn't won. And I, you know, like I said, this is a business. This is, you know, pretty apparent to me after the last eight months. And I looked at that as a decision that I was making strictly uh, because I thought that was the best business decision for me as a hockey player. And it didn't go over well, but uh, then throughout the off season, I, you know, I give Kevin Adams a lot of credit. Uh, he, he went out, he, you know, signed Taylor. He, he made some trades. It seemed like we were in a better position to be competitive, and that excited me again. And obviously we went into the season in January. We didn't have nearly the year we wanted as a group. And, um, you know, it was kind of just a disaster in terms of, uh, you know, personal season for myself. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a great year. I was, uh, you know, obviously injured, uh, in, in March and, you know, things just didn't go well, but, um, yeah, I think, I think probably just that, that conversation that happened a, a year ago probably, uh, you know, had something to do with, you know, part of the, the, the process being so difficult. Take us through Wednesday night. When did you get the call? Uh, so I got the call last night, um, like 1130. Uh, I spoke to Kevin Adams first and then, uh, after I spoke to him, uh, I actually took a couple minutes and, um, spoke to my parents. Um, and then, uh, then I spoke to Kelly McCrimmon in, in Vegas. So you get that call. First of all, how did the call go with the Sabres and Kevin Adams? You know, it's been a long process. It's been dragged out. It's probably been, um, it's not probably, it's definitely been uh, made a lot probably uh, more public and, and um, a lot bigger deal in, in the media. And I feel like people have been talking about it. And quite honestly, I feel a little bit embarrassed. It's uh, <clears throat> as a hockey player, you want to be, you know, you want to be in the uh, in the media, and you want people talking about you for your performance and and good things and your team winning games. You know, not not things like this. So it's it's definitely been um, it's been a little tough at times. Just the conversations that people are having about you, or you know, about whether it's a trade and and surgery and just your whole situation. But you know, there's a respect between Kevin and I, and and uh, we knew that uh, you know something needed to happen, and and you know I appreciate him, uh, you know, him giving me the opportunity to go somewhere and and get my preferred surgery and, and just try and, uh, you know, get my career, uh, career back where it needs to be. And I wanted to just stand up for what I believed in more than anything. And, and, um, you know, there was disagreements and it's understood, but, uh, I think we, uh, you know, we finally got past that. I was just going to stay, uh, stay true to what I believed in. Did you understand Buffalo's opinion? I I'm not going to get into that. We'll just quick, quick. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another time, unfortunately, like I, uh, if I hadn't been traded last night, that would have, that would have, the question would have went differently. Was there anywhere else you thought you were going to be traded to? Was there any point where you said, okay, I'm going to be a blank? Yeah, you know what? I, I, uh, the, the whole process was a pretty long one, so there was, there was a lot more teams that, that seemed to be in the mix maybe in the, in the summer and um, you know, maybe around the draft or whatever. So the process has been a long one. Um, you know, for a while I thought, uh, you know, maybe I was going to Minnesota and then, um, you know, there was even a small, uh, there was a, there was a short time where I was like, wow, I really think it's a possibility. I'm going to go to Colorado. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, that seemed like it could have gotten done. People have told me that there's no CBA now, new one for five more years. But they have told me that this will be the most hot button issue. What happened with you is going to be at the forefront of the next negotiations. What do you think should happen with this? Uh, I just think like anything else, it's, isn't it a constitutional right? I mean, you should have the right to your body. Uh, and that's sort of what I stood by throughout this process is, uh, I'm not going to do something to myself that I don't believe in. Uh, I'm not going to get a surgery I don't believe in. Uh, I've, I, like I said, I mean, I've, I feel like I've made it pretty clear. I'm the only person that has to deal with this or live with this decision the rest of my life. So I feel like I am the only person that's, uh, that should make that decision. Uh, I don't think someone else should make a decision for me on, on, on my body. If I've educated myself, if I know the risks, I should have the opportunity to make the decision. Okay, let's imagine it. You have your surgery, you're healthy, you're ready to play. The lights go down in Vegas, the drummers come out, <laughs> the light show starts, you're wearing a golden helmet, you come out of the tunnel. Yeah. What's that going to be like? I just can't wait to, to be a hockey player again. And amazing, amazing fan base there. Uh, it's an incredible atmosphere. Um, you know, everyone in, everyone in the world talks about it. So uh, I'm just really looking forward to, to being a part of that organization and, and, um, and, and just getting to play hockey again and doing what I love. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm really excited for that moment.